weekend, do a Saturday all day stream or something. As a thank you to all the wonderful people out there. It seems pretty good, right? So one of the things about smallpox is this is just like a very powerful card, but you have to have a way to break, excuse me, break parity. All right. Remember when I said we might not have a terrible Tron matchup? Excuse me, time to put that to the test. Out of, out of the frying pan and into the fryer. I don't think we've played uh, Mono Blue on stream before. Not that I recall. You can search my YouTube channel. If we've played it, it's definitely on my YouTube channel. Everything everything we play gets ends up there. Loam also lets you break the parity of Liliana the Veil really nicely too, which is great. Do you have a favorite viewer deck that you've ever played? Probably uh, Jessica Ascendancy was actually originally an Anironix donation. And I really, I really like that deck. I think I might play it at the Open in Indianapolis next month if Matt and I go. I played it at the Team 5K we played last weekend. Depending on how good their draw is here, us killing one Tron piece isn't going to really amount to much, so we'll see. Not having Ghost Quarters in our main definitely makes us, almost certainly makes us a dog to this matchup game one, I think. Next turn we can dredge the loam, and if that dredges into a land, we'll have this to loam back three cards here. But Tron's really good at reassembling, so we're going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Hey, Waifu. Hi. To dredge this. I guess the real question here is do do I think I have a reasonable enough chance to win? I guess if I if they brick on I guess if they brick on a Tron piece and this Liliana gets going, we could potentially rip a reasonable card and run away with the game. We do really need to draw a seismic assault here. Sure, this will show us the power plant. I'll just be, be in a sad way. A pox on the Tron. A pox on the Tron player. Hey, Waifu. Hi. How are your dungeons and your dragons? Um, I might have accidentally ended our campaign tonight. I might have accidentally or ended. Or at the very least killed everyone in the party. Even your character? Yeah, I set the kingdom on fire. <laughs> I feel, I feel like that's not the end goal. Do you ever try the version of JAC where you turn your land into a creature off? Those cards weren't very good in my experience. Those variations, no. All right. Well, they didn't find Tron off of that, but this is probably... Yeah, Worm Coil might be beatable. Maybe I should have kept the anger because of Worm Coil. Yeah, I probably should have kept the anger because of Worm Coil, right? Because I could, I could edict them and then anger to sweep the tokens. So I should have just discarded a land. Or the Collective Brutality. This card really doesn't accomplish much in this matchup. So if anybody wants to send me ideas for uh, some level 3 characters to get out of a wildfire in a giant island of plains. That's, that's a very good draw. Um, unfortunately, we just can't beat Eugene, right? We just can't beat Eugene. Yep. Yep. Let's get the wet balls. I want to be part of Hooglandia. I want to be part of Hooglandia. Am I the boss of Hooglandia? You are certainly one of the bosses. So I think I want all of these. I think this is an easy Anger of the Gods out matchup. This is an easy Collective Brutality out matchup. Uh, flame Jab doesn't accomplish a whole lot. 
I guess Flame Jab's kind of a Seismic Assault that we could play from the discard pile, so maybe I'm just never supposed to trim that. I think Morton Voltex is probably too expensive here. Oh, you want to see the wife? She's beautiful. Definitely. Definitely better than my ugly face. I wore my blue dress today to work. And every time I wear that dress, Declan tells me, Mommy, you're pretty. And then I give him anything he wants. <laughs> Alright, so for boarding in two ghost quarters, I can probably afford to cut a land. Probably the second swamp could go out. Where's my number six with the Baja Blast? It's in the mail. We'll send it your way. What's my last two trims here? I think I want the Ancient Grudges. Maybe I don't want these Abrupt Decays if I have Ancient Grudges. That's probably it, right? Just like Abrupt Decay is a little bit medium. Yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm going to mute myself really quick here so I can eat, uh, I can eat this thing. Christy was upset that I was muted. She wanted to talk to people. She thought she thought she was talking to you that whole time. She she's not a she she can Well, the light wasn't blinking, and the light usually blinks when you're so muted. So this button sucks. So I have a keyboard hotkey now to mute yeah. myself. If the light was blinking, I wouldn't have been an idiot. Oh, the shell is the chicken. Yeah, the shells. You didn't realize the shell was the chicken. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not until I already ate half of it. That's why it's deep fried. Okay, that makes more sense now, and I'm less appalled. I'm less appalled. This is, this a keep. is the strangest thing I've ever eaten. This is a keep, right? It's got ghost a raven. It's got a raven's crime and a ghost quarter. The quesarito is great and moderately cheap. Ding! That's exactly what the sand needed to uh, to wrap it all together. So we ended tonight with the fire being set, but the party's all split up, so like half of them don't even know the fire's been set. Oh my, I put a mulligan to four. That's good for us. So my plan, I've been told that we can probably outrun the fire, at least for a little while until, you know, we die of exhaustion. So we're going to run for as long as we can to get far enough ahead of it that we have enough time to make a clearing, and then we're just going to lay down until it goes past us. What do you think? Was it a good plan? Or a bad plan? Sorry, I have a Tron player to do terrible things to. Maybe chat has opinion on your plan. I was mostly asking them. Mostly I mean, asking them. They're the only reason you win games anyway, so... Why in the world is Retrace a thing? Right, we're going to be able to Ghost Quarter them next turn, plus loan back our Karens and our Ghost Quarter. Mm. What would a second fire do? That seems. Oh, that's un that's unfortunate. Hey, get ready for bed. Catch you later. Have a good evening. That's really unfortunate for us. This is one of the reasons we boarded an ancient grudge. So the kingdom's on an island, and there's like 
a forest and a forest and a forest that are really they're very very small though and like two mountain ranges with mines in them we're kind of close to the mountain range with the mines we might be able to just like climb a mountain and hope it doesn't catch on fire too and it's an island so it's sur surrounded by water but 90 percent of this island is just plains so it's going to go up in flames really really quickly Watched your videos on YouTube for Green Black Hawk and was wondering if you had a chance to test Nissa for an opinion on her on the sideboard. Now I haven't really played many games with her. I I did I did end up liking Gaze of Granite a lot, but I really didn't get a chance to play a ton with Nissa. Hey, look at that! We loaned into three lands. God, we're a professional. One of them we we hit Raging Ravine and a Cycle Land here. God, that's good. That is spicy. So we kind of get our engine going here. We get to cycle this and draw a card. Ghost Quarter is a heck of a card. Um, do I just start Ghost Quartering them here? I think I'm supposed to give them one turn to potentially have Tron. Because by getting my fourth mana producing land into play, I'm able to loam, cycle, and Ghost Quarter every single turn here. Which allows me to really get going. Whereas if I start Ghost Quartering them now... I'm not going to be able to cycle in the same turns that I go quarter. They have to have, like, Tron Peace into Bomb here to really punish us. Lilia Bad with the four-month resubscription. Thank you very much and welcome back. Just came from watching Belcher on YouTube. You sound seriously slow after listening to you on 2x speed. Thanks for the bits. I am definitely slower than me at 2x speed. You are not wrong. So, cycle this. Okay, Flame Jab is an eventual win condition here. We'll see how many basic lands they have here. If they're on Mono Green Tron, they could have up to five basic forests here. Yeah. And this is Ghost Quarters, like what we're doing here, is a big reason to be in Mono Green Tron. I'm going to discard this Flame Jab here, I think. I'm going to mute myself one more time to finish off the last of my Quesarito here. All right, do I want to dredge this loam here? I'm not sure that I do. I feel like I want to just take a draw and then probably take another draw. And probably dread bore this. Play a tapped land. Yeah, I think I'm going to play a tapped land and then dread bore this. And then next turn we can get loam going again. We can uh, abrupt decay this too even. Probably abrupt decay the beast instead of ghost quartering them. We could also flame dub the token, that's true. Is that better than just abrupt decaying it? I guess it's a similar amount of mana. Well, I guess that's fair. Kill it with fire. Decay does hit Ozone Flater, that's true. This also gives me a window to like drop another land into play here, which is nice. Grab my cycle, my untapped land, and my blood crypt. Don't really need don't really need fetch land at this point. Well maybe I should fetch another green. We have a Worm Coil Engine. That's really unfortunate for us. 
I'm gonna take a draw step before we do anything here. Mmm. Mmm, is that a... How do we feel about that one, Chad? Is that good? Scale of, scale of one to not bad. How do we feel about that one? Alright, let's go ahead. Sweet, we got another cycle land in here, too. So we'll do this, this, and this. Get this Blood Crypt into play. I can grudge this annoying guy. Maybe I should be quartering them aggressively? I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. Like, they probably have five basics in their deck. I feel like there's a very good chance they have five basic lands. All right, I'm going to start by casting Faithless Looting here and see where we go from there, I think. I'd like to draw some, like, actual spells here. Like, if we had a Seismic Assault, it would be kind of great. Oleana's okay. I guess I can Liliana, Edict, and then I can Ghost Quarter them this turn as well, and I can Flashback Grudge on the other one. Again, like, just start working through their Tron pieces. Working to get down to all their basics. <laughs> This is kind of boring. I'm going to go upstairs. It's kind of boring. Love you, too. Catch you later. Have fun. Enjoy your farm. I assume you're going to bed soon. I'm going to go to bed soon, yeah. That kid was up too much last night. Yep. Did Almost. you put your food garbage in that garbage? I did. Then... I didn't really have any food garbage. Okay. I eat all my food. I'm not wasteful. I mean, I didn't eat the tomatoes that fell out of it. Evening, Jeff. I've been lurking since you got on, but haven't said anything. It's hard to type with sticky, mokey hands. Tonight we made mokey and purchased mean, unfun things for EDH because I'm mean spirited and awfully salty, meme lord. <laughs> Look, fun is zero sum, so if you get to have all of the fun, then, then by design your opponents get to have none of it. I am not going to GP Vegas. Going to Grand Prix is like taking your money and setting it on fire by and large. Wow. Fair. That's good for us. We're going to decline dredging the slum since we have a loam in our hand. Cycle. Pick up some cycles and a ghost quarter. <laughs> This Ghost Quarter should turn into Strip Mine sometime soon here. I think a lot of Mono Green lists play five forests. Only four. Okay. So we have we have a we have a we have a strip mine online. So we are going to kill all of their lands here one turn at a time. Hopefully this is another Thrag Tusk. We have everything but a Thrag Tusk covered here at the moment. Worm Coil Engine. Yeah, I got that one covered. So we're going to go ahead and I think I just Ancient Grudge this. No, I want to Ancient Grudge it next turn, right? I want to Ancient Grudge it so it can't attack me. Actually, I probably want to cycle another land here. So these are just wastelands at this point. How high is the chance of decking? I guess that's real, huh? I guess we could have an actual, actual factual chance of decking here. There should be a mountain in my deck that I can go get. Take that an ancient grudge of this now. So this does mean the way they've sequenced here, we are going to have to take a hit next turn. But, like, they're down to five lands now, so they're not going to be able to play... They can play exactly Thrag Tusk, and that's not even that's not even particularly good. 
The aggressive ghost quarter there feels strange to me. Because, like, now I can loan, loan back the ravine and, like, kill them with it eventually. The Maelstrom Pulse is going to clean these up. Get back Raging Ravine, Ghost Quarter, Overground Tomb. No, I just drew a Stomping Ground. Eh, I guess it's Overground Tomb. Then I'm going to go ahead and... Guess I just... No, I can't flash back to Ancient Grudge. Yeah, so I need, to, I need to shock in a green source here. So I can Maelstrom Pulse these tokens. Because even though these tokens have different abilities, they, don't, they are still both called Worm Token. So this does clean up both of them, which is nice for us. I'm discarding a land here, probably the stomping ground. And at this point, I'm pretty sure I want to ghost quarter this turn because, um, I want to make sure that my opponent uh, can't can't Karn me. It's one of the cards that I can't deal with at this current point in time with the cards that I have. Smallpox is not a terrible draw. It gets the card out of their hand, too. Seems great for us. I just don't need this cathartic reunion at this point. I probably should attack a basic line there, actually. Just want to keep them off of like worm coil mana and stuff they've seen enough all right they put up a heck of a fight for lily mulligan i'm actually going to bring this extra swamp back in and trim a grave in karen's just because karen's is a little bit awkward with damping sphere land destruction hype it's going on zach i think i'm happy with high board other than that like i said i think this match is probably pretty hard for us Opponent Mulligan pretty low there in order for that to work out. <sighs> this just isn't keepable, right? Like, this is like a Snape, a Sneeper in most matchups, like Loam plus Assault. But I think I just need to Mulligan for like Ghost Quarters or Raven's Crimes or, um, or Damping Spheres. Right, let me keep this with a Scribe. Keep a Faithless Looting. Need like some some kind of card selection. Perfect. Um I think I'm gonna bin this, bin this. I guess I could bin this, bin this, because I have Grave Karen's to filter this overgrown tomb. That seems fine. I have no idea what Goblin Company refers to as. What are this deck's best matchups? I have no idea. We're learning to play. Oh, I can't filter if I play the sphere. <laughs> we even talked about that too. So 10 out of 10 should have discarded this. Shh. Shh. Chat, it's late. It's late. I'm old and dumb. So this should be in my bin and Blood Grip should be in my hand. Again, for those who aren't familiar, if you filter with Grave Carrions, it just produces Colorless Thunder Damping Sphere. Because Grave Carrions is technically making multiple colors of mana. Good news, Karn's not going to be relevant for a little while. that one's good i guess i want to wait a turn on that yeah i'm gonna wait a turn on that actually and the reason why i'm waiting a turn is i kind of want to try and find a loam or something to break parity with it 
this is bad here if they have nature's claim because if they have nature's claim they can claim my sphere play their tron piece carnas which is then probably good game Mm, that's a little brutal too although i guess they have to take the smallpox here which leaves me with the seismic assault which is pretty good so hopefully we draw land that's great And then I should just kill this now. So that way, in case I draw a Raven's Crime, we can Raven's Crime them. Well, I guess this is bad if I draw a spell and they have another Thought Knots here. Oh, can't Crime because of Sphere. Yep, 10 out of 10 should have just waited. Opponent on the make seven land drops, cast card naturally plan here. This is a pretty fucking good plan if I do say so myself. I wonder if because we have access to Damping Sphere, if we're supposed to have a tech edge. I guess there's only so much room for effects like that though. Liana the Veil, vale. that's a very good draw. Card that can pressure their hand nicely. We have four cards left. We know one's a Karn. And Karn's gonna have a few juicy targets to down tick on here. I might just fire up the Raging Ravine next turn, just like start beating him down with that. Because like if they want to ghost quarter me, that puts them one turn off of the Karn, which is ideal for us. So this is four, five, six. I could kill them in three if we just draw some lands here. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I just want to be aggressive here rather than loot. If he plays Karn, the Raging Ravine kills him. Kills the Karn. So I don't really need to hold a land. If he, like, plays Karn, Karn and down ticks. So they're going to get to play Karn next turn. The question is, like, what are they doing with the Karn after they cast it? It's like they're getting a land here guaranteed. Christy went upstairs. I can put this back over here. Yep. So where are we? What's the what's the payoff here? And again, this is this game's like a good example of like damping sphere is not good enough against Tron without a without a clock to accompany it. I guess there's a non-zero chance they plus this here to keep the Karn alive. No, that doesn't surprise me. Okay. So if they have uh they have like an Ulamog in hand, we're pretty pretty rocked here. I guess I could just play this out. There's really no reason to play this out though, right? Yeah, I just wanna just wanna try and kill them, I think. Meme honor. So this is definitely just killing Karn. Yeah. And then if they don't have an Ulamog here, we could potentially use this Liliana to break their stuff up next turn. So they need they need a payoff in their hand. They need they need a they need a Karn or an Ulamog here to take Liliana out. If they have Karner Ulamog, we're probably dead. But if they don't have Karner Ulamog, we might have a chance here. If 
It's going to be like Sylvan Scrying for Sanctum of Ugin into a Nugin, into an Omog. But in Hex, I'm getting pretty fatigued with PvE. Is the money worth to buy a competitive deck and start on the line? I mean, it depends on like money's worth is a, yeah, just every fucking time. What is a Walking Ballista? Walking Ballista is actually more beatable than some of the other things. Nope. 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 You ever met a Tron player that doesn't have it? I've not. Oh, Tron. Oh, Tron. Oh, Tron. The cost the cost of decks that you can play on the, the Hex Ladder competitively is, like, pretty cheap. So, like, putting, like, 10 to $25 into a video game is, like, not that much money, especially in relation to, like, what other video games cost. So if you enjoy if you enjoy playing it, it's probably worth spending ten dollars on. Uh, with a flame jab or seismic assault. If you want to buy a more expensive deck, if you think you'll get $163 worth of enjoyment out of it, that's a personal decision. Some of the more expensive decks are definitely fun to play. You know, like, do you think do you think you're gonna spend 20 hours playing that deck and enjoy playing it for 20 hours? If so, you know, like that's less than ten dollars an hour for en entertainment. It's like cheaper than going to a movie. It's cheaper than going out to eat. Like. What something is worth is going to is going to vary drastically from person to person. Different people value things at different different ratios. Yeah, this is definitely the last deck of the night. It's currently uh, eleven thirty cornfield time, and usually I start about nine a.m. in the morning. Sulfur Falls tapped. Been to Young Pyromancer. Interesting. Interesting. We played against a Jeskai Pyromancer deck earlier tonight. This could be something similar. Could be like a Blue Moon style deck too. Flame Jab's probably going to be Deece Plus here. You have to hold the control key. The left control key lets you cast a spell and retain priority while you cast it. My question was a little bit more, does the game get better on the ladder? Like it feels, feels very much like Eternal, which I played before seeing you stream hacks. I'm not sure what you mean by get better on the ladder. Again, like I like the better, better worst type comparisons like that are just like fairly subjective by and large. So, I'm always I'm always hesitant to tell someone that something's going to be better or worse than something else because again it depends on like a lot of that is very personal preference. I will say that the the PVE in the game is very different than the PV the PV the PVP in the game is very different than the PVE. I think playing against people is has a much different feel than playing against a computer by and large. Yeah, right? Where's my, where's the Cabal Therapy when you need one? Hopefully they drew a red source and just go like land, Gitu, Gitu, and we just anger them. Huh. Derby says. You do. This tech top aided regionals. Harlan Harlan Fear. Top aided and SCG. I guess I shouldn't say this deck top eight. I should say Har Harlan Fear top aided regionals playing this deck. It's like when whenever Gabe Nassif posts whatever pile of pile of poop he's been playing in modern, his green white decks are his blue black controls, and just like, well, Gabe Nassif is a much better magic player than the rest of us.
And when normal human beings pick up these decks, we'd be much worse with them. They have a cantrip here. This could be pretty good. If they just need one more instant or sorcery in their bin to make these things a little scary. And you also get to make the gods very angry here in a second, which is nice. Maybe I loot first, try and find a land. Potentially. Let's see if they have a cantrip here or not. No cantrip, huh? That's pretty good for us. I think I'm going to start on Faithless Looting here. A lot of lands in our deck. Well, ain't that a bag of dicks? I think I want to just take a card out of their hands here. I think this is fine. Like, we could end up getting more value out of this, right? Like, if they play another Lava Mancer out here, and we just get to, like, anger or pulse them. They're paused on their upkeep here. Opponent got the late night motos going on. Yeah, gotta get your main phase before you cast the other D2, bud. That, there is a 0% chance that card is modern playable. That is. Look at the top four cards of your deck and put them back. Yes, you have your... Fugitive Wizard Resolves. Fugitive. Fugitive Wizard Resolves. There are 15 years worth of modern legal magic cards, opponent, and you, you have registered Fugitive Wizard. Is this a concession anger, chat? How do we... How do we feel about, what do you think, concession anger? Yes, no, maybe. I feel like it could be a concession anger. Like this has to be worse than just like playing cantrips, right? They just had Jeff style luck flipping Delver, right? So I chose not to not to dredge there because I know I'm just casting anger this turn. So if we drew a land naturally, that would be fine for us. I'm not gonna plus my Liliana the Veil here. I don't think. All right, now we're gonna dredge loam because so we can cast loam this turn. Sweet, we hit two lands off of that. They are both tapped lands, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. I'm not sure if you're aware, Matthew, but Murmuring Boss taps for not one, not two, but three different colors of mana. It is, it is far from being Fugitive Wizard. Thank you. Peace, Bushi. Have a good evening. Be nice, said Jeff. You must be new here. This thing resolve yet? Did you draw a remand or a mana leak? This 
slow grind. Take it easy. Be -de 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 -de. Matt, I've got some I've got some news that's gonna shock and appall you. The idea that there is this super competitive something or other out there somewhere is pretty much a fucking lie. Every everything is very casual. Nothing nothing is super competitive. What's going on? Just finished my math exams, bro. Thanks, Fire Spoon, for the tip. I appreciate it. Hope your exams went well. Do I do I want these Ravens? I probably just want Dreadbore, right? Just like want things to impact the board, I think. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, you mean in terms of clock? Yeah. Yeah, people on Magic Online play really slowly, if that's what you're referring to. People on Magic Online play obnoxiously slowly. Very, very slow. I'm just fetching Overgrown Tomb here. Jeff is like a middle child that is proved with the older one. <laughs> we, do, we do have a lot of pox in here. There's a good chance their deck doesn't have many lands in it, right? It's it's by and large using auto pass hockeys. People people by and large don't use their auto pass hockeys enough. 2 2 a.m. Where are you at that it's 2 a.m.? That 2 a.m. is a time that doesn't exist right now, right? I feel like 2 a.m. is a lie. Where are you are you over the ocean if it's 2 a.m.? Wait. They had another can trip. But they didn't. All right. All right, sure. What's going on, Bruce Bry? Brazil, okay. So I'm binning Black Cleave Cliffs Life from the Loam here. I'm doing okay. Running a little late tonight, but that's okay. The uh, the CD icon's a silver coin. We updated we updated the bit badges so they're all custom now. Well, except for the the one in the the one in the one hundred. So the the thousand five hundred the, the one thousand bit badge and the five thousand bit badge are silver and gold coins, and then um the ten thousand through seventy five thousand are circulates and the hundred K on up are are crowns. I, Sylvan Awakening doesn't fix any problems that Just Kai Ascendancy deck has, in my experience. Oh, jeez, they have a Surgical Extraction. I want to get a new bit badge, but I can't do it until Monday. It's a predicament. Lots of lots of old coins had holes in them. It's only like contemporary coinage that doesn't that doesn't have holes in them. Definitely, definitely lots of coins throughout history that have had that have had holes in them. Thank you. Quick Google image search there.
There's a deck list on your screen. If you're on mobile, you can type exclamation point deck to get a link to the deck list in chat. Ah, ah, fugitive wizard, eh? Let's see where opponent is still employing a fugitive wizard strategy. Am I just like dredging this loam and then casting other smallpox next turn? The Hoaglandia coin is silver with a hole in it. I really wish they would have let me customize the the 1 in 100 bit badges. It annoys me that I can't, that they're different. I think I just want to just wanna keep kicking them while they're down, right? Just like put them down to one land and one card in hand here. We'll bin low and bin overground tomb here. I think that seems good. This card's really, really powerful when you can break parity with it. They board it in Disdainful Stroke. That literally doesn't counter anything in our deck, right? Just actu actual zero things. Okay. If... They've had enough. We've we've poxed them out. We've poxed them out of the game. It's sickening. What a sickening magic card. Alright, we're one and one. Slow and city. I think I'd rather fill the graveyard up. Dredging the loam puts puts a wider selection of lands in my graveyard for the future when I cast the loam. And uh, I could potentially dredge us into flashback cards like Faithless Looting. You're right. I could, I could take a draw step to like try and get a better card than one of the cards I already have in my hand. But I think it was pretty unlikely. We are not playing Countryside Crusher. It is illegal to play competitive REL tournaments without sleeves these days. They are they are required. Which is really funny because like once upon a time you weren't allowed to play with sleeves. The sand is decent. Um, again, smallpox is only really good if you have a way to break the parity with it. And the sand doesn't currently have um, a loam or a way to do that. Anironix has an unnatural love for an, an unnatural love for Countryside Crusher. Shard Volley. Alright, well, I'm glad we have four coursers on our board. This matchup's probably still hard even with four coursers. Yeah, like, if you go back and watch Magic, like, on, like, when Magic was, like, on ESPN and shit, you'll see the people playing without sleeves. That's because they weren't allowed to. It's like a moped. You have a great time playing with it, but you don't want your friends to catch you. Uh, we don't have Ghost Quarters in our main deck. Actually, don't have copies of Ghost Quarter in our main deck. That is a phenomenal draw, except I didn't fetch a green source, but they're missing a land drop here, so... I get to fetch a green source with this next turn. 
or this turn here, sorry. Yeah, Helix me. The problem here is that like, I just don't have, I don't have a good way to actually end the game here. Yeah, I've played Conflagrate in configurations of this deck before. It's definitely a powerful card. Need late night life advice because I have two damn. I have this fancy, one last fancy juice in my fridge. Do I drink it tonight and go to the store tomorrow or be lazy and survive on the garbage in my fridge till Friday? I, I'm going to change your life here, hopefully. Did you know that there are grocery stores that will deliver food to your house? A lot of them, if you order a minimum amount of food, will deliver it without a delivery fee, too. It's, it's fucking life-changing, and it is, it is wonderful. Just want to let you, just want to let you in on that, that, that piece of hot technology. The Hy-Vee is the store in our town that does it. If you order $100 worth of food, they don't charge you for delivery. Yeah. Hy-Vee Grocery is the one that does it where, where, where we live. All right. I think I'm just supposed to dredge this loam. Oh, we dredged into a cycle land too. That's so good for us. So good for us. All right, opponent, please continue drawing two mana spells. Please continue drawing two mana spells. It is. It's true. It's truly amazing. As a as a lazy American, it is. It is a life changing thing. All right, we've been to faithless looting this turn too. Keep drawing two mana cards. All right, that one's fine. I can, I can abrupt decay that one, right? Where's my faithless looting? There it is. Morton Voltex. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think? Is this a concession smallpox? How are we? How are we feeling? Concession smallpox here? Is is this a concession smallpox? We're at, we're at five, so it might not be a concession smallpox, but it's it's pretty fucking close to a concession smallpox, chat. There's, if there was ever anything that was close to a concession smallpox, it's that fucking smallpox right there. Ooh. Ooh, it was yummy. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. All right, we're going to board out these angers. I'm going to board in these courses or crew fix. Um, do I want these dread boars? Probably not. I think flame jab is probably too slow here. It's a good chance Cathartic Reunion is too slow. They ever ban Partner Commanders on Moto MV1? Maybe, I don't know, the Best of One really turns me off. That Best of One is just like not really an enjoyable format. Yeah, Ghost Quarter could be okay. He seems like going up on one of those. I'm gonna run it like this. I think I'm just gonna run it like this. Ghost quarter, technically. We can ghost quarter ourselves and get our forest too, which is nice. Excuse me. Again, smallpox. Incredibly powerful card. Just gotta just gotta find a way to break the parity that it has. Collective brutality, loam, smallpox, just all of these delicious things. Come to me. Come to me, my child. Come to me. I'm going to play this Overgrown Tomb Tapped, I think. I want to take minimal amounts of damage from my lands this game. I 
I mean, there's more to life than just having children. Children are great. I love mine. But there are other things you can do with your time, too. If you're a 26-year-old adult who works, if you don't have children, you you can have piles of money instead. I hear, I hear piles of money are nice. Some of my other friends have those. So do I pox them here or do I loam? I think I'm just supposed to pox them, right? I could like go all in on a collective brutality here. I think poxing them is better. I'm at 17. I wouldn't go to a, a magic tournament trying to win. I think going to a magic tournament while trying to win is silly. You should go to a magic tournament to have fun. Magic has a lot of variance in it. You should focus on having fun. Yeah, I think we want to pox the idol on two. That puts us to 14. But like if they don't if they don't have a third land, like the game can end on the spot. I think I think we pox here rather than brutality because there's like there's a chance that like this this card just ends the game. I'm gonna bin grave carriage and then discard life from the loam here, I think. I love casting this card. It's just so ridiculously powerful. We played, if you if you like the card Smallpox, like me, and you didn't catch, wow, they didn't board out Shard Volley, um, and you didn't catch the Black White Gorios Pox deck we played the other night, you definitely want to catch the replay on that on my YouTube. It's super sweet. Oh, rip us in the most literal sense. In... In the most literal manner possible, rip. I think I just escalated brutality here. Punished for firing off the brutality when we did. Well, I al I always stream on Wednesday nights, uh, Rev 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 Daddy. And I, I was just, Christy went out last night too. So Christy always goes out on Wednesday nights. So I stream on Wednesday nights after the kids go to bed. But she went out with some other friends last night too. So I decided I might as well stream. Yes, it does. Yes, it does, Rogue. It's, I think I fetched wrong here. And maybe I should have just fetched shocked. Or at the very least, I should have gotten a black source. I can, I can cast Abrupt Decay now, which is nice. Uh, I believe it's called... I called it Black White Goryeo Pox. I'm pretty sure I called it Goryeo Pox. Gross. Um. I think I just pass here.
Didn't do a spell. There's a very good chance we're dead. You're not wrong. Corsair Crucifix is the best draw in our deck. We have four of those. It's not a bad draw either. So I'm dead to a spell anyways. I'm just going to play this and hope they have lands, I think. Do you have any recent Hex Mill deck videos? No, I haven't played the, the, the combo mill deck that's been going around Immortal yet. Seems sweet though. Go. You can hold up this abrupt decay in case they rip a goblin guide. Dead. I guess if I looting there, I could have coarser, but then I'm still just dead to uh We I had someone Apprentice of Bolas donated a little bit of a premium so we could build Mill Rogue in Hearthstone's Wild format, but it's just it's really too expensive to get into Hearthstone's Wild format. Like, I dumped a little over a grand into Hearthstone to be able to play all their standard decks and just like having to expand past that it's just far too costly. It's not it's not like Hearthstone or Magic. Or it's not like Magic or Hex where I can borrow cards. This unfortunately isn't good enough without Black Mana, I don't think. Everybody can check close seven into unkeepable six off of your bingo cards. Just Mujik of the Gathering things. Far less variants than Hearthstone, for sure, for sure. Well, we have kind of an engine going here, but unfortunately, this is not a matchup where, like, we really get enough time to really leverage the engine. Those are Raven's Crimes. Huh. Yeah, Hex has a lot of sweet Storm-esque variants in their different their different formats. Their standard format actually pretty consistently has a Storm-esque variant, which is pretty sweet. So I could go fetch a Swamp here, flashback this Raven's Crime, and then pick two of my lands back up. Yeah, I want to work on I want to work on a Syzygy deck in a Mortal. The Raven's Crime to basically read gain three, right? Like every one of our lands is a gain three here. The problem is this fucking goblin guide is just killing us. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty dead here. Get that that second game if the rip hadn't hit as soon as it did, we might have had a chance there. But that that third game, just like any game a goblin guide gets to deal more than four points of damage, you're just like almost never beating the burn deck, except for like in extreme circumstances with something give like a ley line or something like that out. Jeff, can you please explain why you fetch before goblin guide attacks? I know you said it before, but I don't recall, and I'm curious. So the logic is if you are looking to draw a spell, you are more likely to find a spell if you fetch before the Goblin Guide trigger resolves than if you fetch after. Because for instance, if you if the Goblin Guide if the Goblin Guide attacks you and there's a spell on top of your deck, then you fetch 
and then there could no longer be a spell on top of your deck after you fetch. Whereas if you fetch first and the Goblin Guide attacks and there's a land on top of your deck, the Goblin Guide then clears that land, so then you have another chance to draw a spell for the turn. Whereas if you already have a spell, then you know there's a spell coming up. It sounds like okay. It's not like super impressive. Uh, again, like cards like Cathartic Union and Collective Brutality are a little bit less up powerful when we don't have a way to break the parity that they generally have. I don't know that that's really true. A lot of the things the deck is doing is very similar. It's got it's got a bunch of really powerful cards in it that are looking to be extra strong when you have a way to break their their like one for oneness or their symmetry. And um, Life from the Loam is definitely really good at breaking the symmetry that like Collective Brutality and Cathartic Reunion offer. Fishies, huh? That's just like that's such a great Twitch chat interaction. Opponent opponent says Person says ultimatum statement without describing what they mean. I give them the benefit of the doubt by articulating myself to say why I feel they might be wrong. They they take my statement to mean an extreme that I didn't imply through my statement. Let's get out of here. It's not how you have a meaningful discussion. How many are, are you playing blue cantrips? Like that's are you playing wasteland? Like there's a lot of factors that go into that calculation show. A lot of factors. And then get through some cards here. Loam's a good pickup. Loam's a good pickup. Need to go ahead and fetch shock a green source and then double crime them next turn. Like I said, I think what this deck is doing is like genuinely pretty powerful. We got, we're, we're one and two. We lost that close set to burn. And then the set we lost to Tron was actually pretty close too. Especially for what I what I would consider is almost certainly a bad matchup. We have three copies of Abrupt Decay. I think before I played more Maelstrom Pulse, I might board something like Engineered Explosives. I don't know. You have you have a lot of you have a lot of clean ways to interact with their stuff. I feel like I'm probably pretty obligated to play to the board this turn, huh? I feel like I'm kind of obligated to play to the board. My sequencing here is wrong. I think I should have a lead on this collective brutality and then played the loam as the follow up because I really want to take both these guys off the table at some point and now they're going to sacrifice the curse catcher to protect the silver girl adept. Yeah, and I'd much rather take the silver girl adept. Screw June 18th. Let's change things now. Please put these towards dealer's choice. Thanks for the bits, Wraith Morn. I hope the cult doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do anything too terrible to you. Yeah, but part of the reason you move through the deck, Bushi, is because you have Loam. Like, Loam is a big part of why you're seeing so much of your deck. Like, you you only have six cards that draw extra cards outside of the Loam. <laughs> oh, oh, Antirotics. I think we might be dead, chat. I think we might be dead. Let's take a draw step here. We really just need to draw a seismic assault, right? That's not a seismic assault. A 
So I could empty their hand. If I empty their hand, they're gonna have eight power in play, which means I'm probably dead. So I probably can only afford to Raven's Crime them once here. And then probably fetch a forest and abrupt decay this Lord. They have another Lord here. We're taking six this turn. Oh, God. The C, she takes a lot from me, chat. All right. I guess we're just hoping to draw salt here. You guys have to take a draw. I don't think that accomplishes anything. Well, I mean, all right. The sea be a harsh mistress, right? She claims, claims many. Chip. I don't think this is a coarser matchup. We like didn't have one green mana, much less two. It's definitely an anger dreadbore matchup. This is probably a crime out matchup. We just want more things that play to the board. Cathartic reunion's pretty bad against potential counter spells. Ghost quarter seems fine. Just run it like this. Targeting any is pretty much a catch-all. I've been wanting to play modern, but the most budget deck I could afford right now is probably Dredge. I don't know if this deck's power level is really quite there for modern. Again, and I've, I've talked about this on length, that stream a few times. I think uh, I think decks that by and large aren't fairly proactive tend to be a little bit, a little bit not amazing in modern. There's like so many different things in this format that it's hard to be able to catch everything accordingly with with the deck that's trying to be controlling so this is going to be blood crypt stomping ground and then we kind of have all of our colors until we get spreading seized out of the game remember if you're going to offer suggestions in chat you need to be constructive if you don't want to be timed out you need to especially during sideboarding you want to say if you want to bring in a card that i'm not bringing you need to see Say this card is probably better than this other card because, and then explain yourself. I'm always, always looking to have a have a talk about differing opinions and why we could do things better. But if you don't, if you don't tell me why, it's hard for me to have a have a conversation with you about it. Is Dredge the most budget friendly competitive in modern? I think Storm is probably that, right? Blue Red Storm is pretty cheap. I don't actually know a dollar comparison between Storm and Dredge. I'm pretty sure people, I'm pretty sure like Sheer plays the Fetchless version, right? So I'm pretty sure the Fetchless version is just optimal. I guess I could have played Seismic Assault there, but I could also get Spell Pierce. I think I'd rather run the Leon out here because I'd rather she get Spell Pierce than this. Nagate, yep. 
Down she goes. Did he? I have no idea offhand. I honestly can't picture his exact deck list. I am breeding pool. You get just right at the tail end here. If we lose this match, it's going to be the last one. If we if we scrape out here against the fishies, we'll have one more to wrap the league up. Fox is not particularly good on this current board. I'm going to jam this Seismic Assault. We could get Spell Pierce, but I think this is a good one to try and resolve this. If we hit a loam, we just win the game then. Shear plays no fetches. I run the same 75. Look at that. I was correct. Robots is not cheap. Mox Opals are like pushing 100 a pop these days, I believe. Yeah, the, your best bet, Bushi, is just, like, pull up the metagame page on MTG Goldfish and, like, set it to paper prices. Karns are... Karns were pushing 100 a pop at one point. I don't know if they still are. They were definitely very expensive once upon a time. This this Seismic Assault could just take over this game, potentially. Is this, uh... Master of Babes? Sure. To kill that one, please. Alpa with the two dollar donation. Thank you very much. Please tell Anironix to read the first whisper. There was a misunderstanding. I was actually joking. Anironix, double double check the whisper. Alpa's a username I recognize, so. I'm just going to edict them with this. Tilt. Kira could be a way they plow through the seismic assault. Especially if they have like a lord here. Well, I guess if they have a lord, the anger of the gods is just going to like smoke them. I revealed a trick finder mage. Second mutable, it's a little scary. Hopefully we draw lands or a loam here. Yeah, I mean, Elves Without Cavern just like literally top eight at a grand prix rate. Your move. Are you gonna you gonna sleep with the fishes tonight, opponent? And, like, someone earlier was asking about potentially, like, cutting a loam from this deck. Like, this is a good example of a game where, like, you don't want to cut loam, right? Like, we just... Loam is our engine. As soon as we find a loam, this game is going to go from close to just, like, completely slam dunked on our opponent. Echoing truth. Woof.
I'm holding these lands just in case they fire up both Muta Vaults here. I don't really want to risk taking any extra points of damage at this point. They have a Master of Waves here. We could be in a lot of trouble because Master of Waves turns Muta Vault into a 3-3. Three, three. That's fine. All right, they're out of cards here. So, need to shoot this, shoot the Muta Vault that attacks this turn, smallpox away the Tidebinder Mage, and then hopefully rip a land to shoot the other one. Or draw life from the loam and just like motorboat down their entire squad. Just like good clean live in. Feels like a concession loam to me. Feels like a concession loam to me. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Can you taste it? Can you taste it? Maybe cycling there is greedy, because if they hit a lord, I'm going to wish I waited. Yeah, get out of here. Get you. Can you map your thigh boarded? Again, I don't think I like Corsair. Their spreading seas make Corsair hard to get into play. If they have seas, they can also attack through it too. Having Corsairs makes our smallpox is pretty significantly worse as well. That's just uh, makes it harder for us to break parity with that card. It seems like not exciting, but it's fine. Ponza is a very bad Magic the Gathering deck. I would definitely recommend that. I would definitely recommend proxying or playing a bunch of stuff on Cockatrice and uh, getting a feel for what you enjoy the most. That's Root Opponent. You at least have Maelstrom Pulse to trade for this Relic here, which is nice. Trade. We 4 one with Thopter Sword earlier tonight. That deck felt pretty okay. War of Invention's a heck of a drug. So we're going to pull the trigger on this. We just need access to our graveyard if we're going to win this game. So excited for more friends. God bless America. My country. Tis of the sweet land of liberty. Of the I sing. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, so let's do this. And I'm going to go land smallpox here. I should have played the land out first in case they're on another spell pierce, right? I'm just going to bend this loam in the swamp. Go. We'll see if 
Putting a loam in the bin here might encourage my opponent to pop this relic. What we got? My opponent commented in chat that going into this match, they've been keeping track and they are 0-9 against me on Magic Online. And they're hoping to end their losing streak in this game three. <laughs> oh, opponent. I think I'm just supposed to take a draw step here. I don't know. If I dredge, I might get them to force them to pop this relic. I think I'm just supposed to take a draw. Well, I mean... What are the different tier subscriber benefits? Um, you can learn all of my extra bonuses for different tiered subscribers there. That uh, that link. If you have any questions about specifics, feel free to drop me a line. I'm always happy to clarify. We're dead in two, right? There's like eight us, eight us here. I need to need to rip a seismic assault to stabilize here. Details are in the Discord are here. I'll take a draw step here. I think I just need a good one. It's not going to do it. Good game's opponent. It's going to wrap up for the evening. Um, so I thought this build looked kind of sweet. We've played we've played um, Assault Loam decks in the past. Um, I guess just like knowing how modern usually goes, maybe my gut should have led me to knowing that we are going to feel a little bit medium. Yeah, honestly, Anironics, that's the conclusion I'm going to come to, I think. I think the, the lack of Tarmogoyf and Dark Confidant and Countryside Crusher in this deck, just like the lack of way to really apply pressure meaningfully to the opponent, I think that's kind of a big deal. Like, again, Modern's a format where you want to you want to be proactive, generally speaking. So, like, a deck like this is trying to be, like, incredibly reactive. Just, like, there's too many diverse strategies in Modern for you to be reactive successfully against all of them. Uh, at any rate, that's it for me for the evening, folks. I'm signing off. I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning about eight and a half hours from now. And uh, we'll be playing some more modern in the morning. So everybody have a good evening and I'll uh, catch all y'all on the morrow, hopefully.